this video is over absolute value. So the first thing that we need to talk about is what is the formal definition of absolute value? And that is the distance away from zero on the number line. So that is why this is tied in with the number line videos. So down here, it is notated, or the notation of absolute value is two bars on either side of a number. So whenever we see those two bars on either side of the number, that means we're trying to take the absolute value of that number. So let me give you a quick example here. If I wanted to come up with the absolute value of 5, that means I want to figure out what the distance between 0 and 5 on the number line is. So if I find 0 on the number line and I find 5 on the number line, I want to calculate their distance, which is, of course, 5 units away. So the absolute value of 5 is 5. Now that example took an absolute value of a positive number. So what happens if our number is negative? So let's do a second example here. In this example, I want to take the absolute value of negative 3. So I want to figure out the distance between 0 and negative 3 on the number line. Well, if I count the number of units away, it is 3 units away. So the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So the thing to know about absolute value, or more importantly to know about distance, is that distance is always positive. So basically what absolute value does is it just takes all those numbers and it turns it into positive numbers. So let's see some very easy examples of absolute value. So I have two of them here. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with the answers of these on your own. So the first one is absolute value of negative square root of 47. Again, we're only worried about distance, which means we only are worried about the positive of this value. So the answer here is positive square root of 47. Now notice I left it in that exact format. Unless square root of 47 simplified exactly, then I don't really care about touching it at all. I don't want to come up with a decimal approximation of it because decimals are ugly and messy, and so we always want to keep it in the exact form unless it simplifies evenly. Example two, the absolute value of 3 sevenths. Again, our answer is just the positive version of that, which is positive 3 sevenths. And don't worry about dividing out that fraction unless it reduces or simplifies evenly. So those are two examples of absolute value. Now, we saw some inequality examples before, but let's incorporate some absolute value in these inequality examples that we had. So same thing that we did before, we just want to fill in the blank with these here, a greater than, a less than, or an equal to symbol. So I suggest that you pause the video and try and fill in these on your own. So with these, I might just have to simplify the problem a little bit before I pick out which inequality symbol I'm going to use. So in example one, the absolute value of negative two is positive two. And then I want to figure out how does that, in fact, compare to negative 5. Well, negative 5 is smaller than 2, meaning that 2 is greater than negative 5. So my answer here is the greater than symbol. Example 2, again, I just want to simplify this a little bit. I want to take the absolute value of negative 5, which becomes positive 5, and I want to figure out how does that compare to negative 2. Again, the negative is always smaller than the positive, so negative 2 is less than 5. So our answer to this problem is the less than symbol. Okay, now these examples that we've seen so far only involves absolute value of one number. So we can actually have multiple numbers or multiple operations inside an absolute value. So let's see how we work that, and let's see what good that actually does us in the long run. So an example of that would be the distance between two different numbers on the number line. 
So in the first set of examples, we were always comparing distance from zero on the number line. Here, I want to compare the distance between two different numbers in which they're not zero. So the way that we do that, the distance between two numbers on the number line, is the absolute value of one number minus the other. And it doesn't matter whether I do it in this order or if I flip-flop the order of my two numbers because it will always work out the same. So I have an example here. I want to find the distance between negative 2 on my number line, which is here, and positive 10 on my number line, which is here. Now this is a pretty easy problem, and I've drawn up the number line here. So the easiest thing we have to do is just count the distance from here to here. Well, if we did that, we figure out the distance is in fact 12. But in other examples, these numbers are not going to be as close as this example, and so you don't want to draw up the number line with extremely large numbers. So the way that we want to do that instead is using the definition that they just gave us. So I can do this in one of two ways. In the first way, I can take the absolute value of the first number minus the second number. And in the second way, I could do the absolute value of the second number minus the first number. And you can just pick one of these two ways because they will work out exactly the same. And I'm just showing you both of them here to prove to you that they will work out this way. In either way that we work it, absolute value has hidden parentheses that come with it. So that means we need to simplify the inside of the absolute value first. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the absolute value of it. So the last thing we do is we turn it into a positive number. So in my first way, negative 2 minus 10, they're both negative, so that gives me a negative 12 on the inside. To take the absolute value of it, I turn it into a positive number, and so my distance between those two numbers is positive 12. Or if I look at it the other way, 10 minus a negative 2, we know the double negatives cancel out, so that gives us absolute value of 10 plus 2, which gives us 12. And the absolute value of 12, of course, gives us positive 12. So I've just given you three ways to do this problem. The first way, utilizing the number line, that was just to show you the visual of this. I don't want you to use that way from here on out. I want you to use one of these two ways. And in fact, your online homework will require that you write down this step here. So let's see some other examples of this. So in these two examples, we're trying to come up with the distance between these two numbers on the number line. But I don't want you to draw up the number line. I want you to use one of those steps that we did before. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with the correct answers to these two examples. Okay, example one is absolute value of one of these numbers minus the other number. And it doesn't matter which order I have it written in. I did it this way, but if you did it as negative eight minus a negative three, it will work out exactly the same. So in this example, my double negatives cancel out, which gives me negative three plus eight, or I mentally think of it as 8 minus 3. 8 minus 3 gives me 5. Now I take the absolute value of it, and the absolute value of 5 gives me positive 5. So the distance between these two numbers on the number line, they are 5 units away from each other. Example 2. Again, I write the absolute value of one of these numbers, minus the other number in no particular order. Don't forget absolute value has hidden parentheses. So we work the inside operation first, and we take the absolute value second. Now these two numbers have the same sign, so I combine the numbers and keep that sign. So 37 plus 72 is 109. They're both negative. So I have yet to take the absolute value of negative 109. Of course, absolute value turns it into a positive number. So the distance between 
negative 37 and 72 is 109 units. And this is exactly the example that I'm talking about. You wouldn't want to draw this up on the number line because these numbers are much farther apart than what you would want to draw. This is where I'm going to stop this video on absolute value. In the next video, I'm going to talk about combining absolute value with the rules of order or PIMDAS that we've already seen so far.